Hey, and welcome back to the shop. Today, I wanna to see if we can build a portable fuel transfer setup in this little Plano box. And this here is the heart of the operation. This is a facet 12 volt, 36 GPH electronic fuel pump. These are really nice units. This is made in the US. There's a replaceable filter in that cartridge end there. This one was new old stock. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Here's everything I have going on for supplies so far. This is a Plano Marine box. So I wanted to get the smallest box I could find that could conceivably fit all these materials inside. Uh, the outlets of the pump are quarter inch NPT, so I have a quarter inch to quarter inch female adapter and these elbows which take that quarter inch to a 3 8 ID fuel line. I ended up getting 12 feet of 3 8 fuel line from Napa. I wanted to make sure this would fit because 3 8 is kind of pushing it. I, I wanted to get some of that transparent stuff, the, the Tigon or whatever you call it, and unfortunately they don't sell it here in town, so I just went with the standard, but that'll do just fine. It just will take up a little more space inside there. Maybe down the line, I'll end up upgrading. I've got an inline fuse holder. This one will take you up to a 20 amp. And I grabbed one of these cheap Amazon 12 volt chargers. Uh, just, I've had this lying around, this one's broken, but it has a battery connection on the end with this two pin standard 12 volt plug thing. I have a decent number of ends for these uh, battery tender style trickle chargers. So if you don't want to permanently install on your battery, you have these alligator clips and then there's the ones that just connect right to ring terminals. So for a more permanent installation. Long term, I'd like to get an M12 battery socket and plug that in and same idea. I'll just run a pigtail that has that same two pin connector off the end like so. And uh, we'll run a battery protection board to make sure these don't over discharge, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. That's down the line. We'll either be mounting the pump on the back wall vertically or on the bottom of the box. This box does have these little protrusions for feet, so even though we're gonna be through bolting it, it won't be rocking around on some protruding screw head. My main concern is I wanna have an inlet and outlet coil live on either side of the box and then have our little alligator clip mess on the middle. So here's my initial thought. We have the pump located centrally on the bottom, and then we have a coil of hose on either side. It's a little difficult to get it in there, but it'll work. And I could always cut it down to five feet if need be. Then down the line, if we want to add a M12, we can crunch it in that spot. Boy, if I had a carriage bolt that would fit this, that would be slick. All right, there's one, and there's another. And there, I've got a few nice low profile nuts. That is about perfect. Nice and level with those feet. All right, just need to take a few threads off of those. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that arrangement. Let's wire it up. Okay, and I'll be putting a ring terminal on one of these base plate screws on the negative connection. I forgot to add a power switch. I'm thinking that guy right there. I don't really have a nice inline rocker switch is what I was thinking. You know, something out here by the battery, but this is what I have on hand, so we'll give this a roll and see how it works. Cool, I like the looks of that. That'll clear that bale nicely. I did go back and review the specs for this pump. They say to use a three to five amp fuse, so let's see if we can find a three to throw in there. I've only got threes in the mini fuse size, so that'll have to do for now. So I think that's basically everything for now. I'm gonna heat shrink all these up. Okay, there's our full setup. Contact. It's nice and quiet. You guys can probably hardly hear that. Rock and roll. Let's put it all together.
So I've got that fuse holder hanging out loose in the uh, bottom of the bin right now, but maybe I'll zip tie it up if I feel it's necessary. That's everything. Let's see how it packs up. There you go. I'm pretty happy with that, guys. I'm not wild about this switch quite yet, but if I think of something better, I'll change it over. You can always get a new one of these boxes at Walmart. 1350. I think if I, I figure out the the space efficiency a little better or coil these up tighter, I'll be able to fit an M12 battery socket in the center portion here. You know, there's not a lot of room to spare. Uh, let's see how it works with the jumper pack. Maybe we can uh, do a little demo. Here's an example of a typical setup I'd use. I have this boat tank that needs to be emptied. It's got roughly a gallon of fuel in it. It's old. I want to throw it in my van. So I'm going to transfer it to this one gallon gas can. Let's see how quickly we can do it. I'm also really curious how this is going to pump from the ground up to the bench top. This is 34 inches high, so that's a decent amount of head. Uh, this is supposed to be a self-priming pump up to 24 inches. Heck, let's just go for the gold. Let's see if this thing can prime itself from up here. Well, how about that? We got some good flow. And that's a gallon. Man, that was really quick. That was better than I expected, honestly. I'll put the time up there, but no problems at all with uh, the time of flow. Way better than I expected. There's one gallon of fuel ready to go. Now I'm just purging the system back to the tank. This is where I'll get some pipe nipples where I can plug these back together once they're uh, stashed. And there you have it, a portable fuel transfer pump. I'll be able to power this with my M12 batteries. I'll be able to power it with boat batteries. This will come in handy in a lot of places. I want to give a big shout out to MC Tech who commented on my video about how I make ethanol free gas. He gave me the great heads up on these facet pumps. He mentioned that he had had his own for 20 years and that was enough to sell me on it right off the bat. So I went off on Facebook Marketplace and got one the next day. Thank you, MC Tech, I appreciate the idea. Let me tell you, those facet pumps, very impressed with the build quality. I think they'd be a great company to buy from if, you're, uh, if you think you're in the market for a fuel pump. Uh, those pumps are, are pretty pricey. There's a smaller one that's about 50 or 60 bucks off the shelf, which is what I paid for this one. But again, I got this second hand, so your mileage might vary. So I'm in this 60 bucks for the pump, 14 bucks for the box, about 30 bucks in the fittings about 25 bucks for the hose, and then a few little bits like this switch I had lying around. But you could easily put this together on the cheap for under 100 bucks if you were really thrifty. I appreciate you guys coming along on this build with me. Uh, I hope you were inspired to maybe do something of your own. If you have any improvements to suggest or comments or questions about this build, let me know in the comments. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming along with me. Take care, and I'll see you next time.